Warning, spoilers are coming. Hey, you know what I think Cersei's favorite nursery rhyme is? Here goes. Here's the church and here's the steeple. Open the doors and burn all the people in wildfire. Winter is here. But let's start with King's Landing. The prophecy about Cersei's children dying, that came true. And now without her children, Cersei has completely lost her humanity. That's something I think Jaime notices when he returns to the city. Think of it this way. He arrives in King's Landing, sees the Sept of Baelor up in smoke, learns that his last son has died, and then watches as his sister seats herself on the Iron Throne. He's scared of what she could do. And given what the Kingslayer has done in the past to protect the city from burning to hell, Jaime could be on the path to killing his sister to save the kingdoms. After all, the other part of the prophecy about Cersei said that a younger, more beautiful queen would push her aside. Marjorie did that, in a way, but now Daenerys is about to arrive in King's Landing. When Jaime sees Tyrion, his little brother, on her side, he might finally see what has to be done. He's already getting a glimpse of who his sister really is, as someone who will now always choose violence. Could Jamie become the Queen Slayer next season? Oh. Yeah, the things you do for love, right? Then again, maybe Jamie's not the one to plunge the sword into Cersei's back. Cersei thought she burned every enemy she had, but Olena Tyrell is still out there, and now she's plotting with the Sand Snakes to avenge her family. It's a deadly alliance, and the Sand Snakes are even more fond of violence than Cersei is. But here's what we know. Half the Game of Thrones cast is gone because of this season finale. We're done figuring out what will happen to the Faith Militant, we're done figuring out how Cersei will get the upper hand over Marjorie, and we're also done with Walder Frey. Arya carried out her delicious revenge against the man who killed her brother and mother. She baked his sons into her pies, like a Westerosi Sweeney Todd. That said, I'd argue she's become more of a villain than a hero because of this. Boo. Yeah, I know. We should be happy Walder Frey's gone, but should we cheer on Arya as she continues her murder spree now that she's back across the Narrow Sea? Honestly, I just want her to meet the Hound again. Maybe we'll see that next season. And in other Stark news, Sansa's given an offer from Littlefinger that she really needs to refuse. Trouble is, she didn't fully trust Jon this season, and she even kept the news of the Knights of the Vale from him. But the Stark bond they have might keep Sansa from being swayed. The last time she made the mistake of trusting someone as smarmy as Littlefinger, she exposed Ned's secret and pretty much got her father killed. I don't think this new, smarter Sansa will make the same mistake. I think this Sansa now knows Littlefinger's secret, and she should use it to her advantage. Here's hoping she stays on Jon's side, at least. He is her brother. No, he's a cousin. I know. Now that we've seen the full Tower of Joy vision, we know he's not Ned's son, but John doesn't know that yet. Finally, let's not forget Sam. This was only the second time we saw him this season, but it's important to remember that he's not just heading to Westeros' largest library to check out a book on his summer reading list. <laughs> he's there to become a maester, and more importantly, he has access to learning about magic, as in magic that could help destroy the White Walkers. Mark my words, Sam's going to be the savior of Westeros, not by wielding a sword, but by reading a book. Now, considering how many people died in the finale, I think it's time we take a look at a life instead. Welcome to the world, Lyanna's child. Sure, the show didn't reveal who the baby's father is, but we've all figured it out. Hi, baby Jon Snow. You're so important to the plot. That's everything I've got for this epic season and for Entertainment Weekly's Game of Theories. As always, tweet me your thoughts, and then, well, we just have 42 weeks or so until season seven. Cool. I'll be standing right here in front of this board until then, I guess. Thanks for watching.